Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, welcome back. My name is Michael. Uh, we're going to be continuing wordy, wordy, bleh, reading in the book of Matthew. Uh, we left off yesterday with chapter 21, uh, so we'll be resuming with 22 today. Uh, it's just been a really enjoyable experience. I can't really believe that we're already like at chapter 22. Um, it's definitely gone by quick. We're going to be working into the book of Mark here soon. Um, everything's coming into fruition of what Jesus has spoken about, and we're seeing that as we continue on with his word. So, without further ado, I'll stop yammering and just get right to it. So, chapter 22, the parable of the wedding feast. And again, Jesus spoke to them in the parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treating him them shamefully and killing them, and killed them. The king was angry. And he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man. He saw there a man who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness, in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Verse 15, Paying Taxes to Caesar Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarii. And then Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things of, that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Verse 23, Sadducees ask about the resurrection. The same day Sadducees came to him, and who, who say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. So to the second and third, down to the seventh. After them all, the women died. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scripture nor the power of God. For in the resurrection there neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teachings. Verse 34, The Great Commandment But when the Pharisees heard that he had been silenced, had silenced the Sadducees. They gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love your, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Verse 41. Whose son is the Christ? Now while the Pharisees were gathering together, Jesus asked him a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, in the spirit of calls, 
And the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one has able to answer him a word, nor from the day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Chapter 23 Seven Woes to the Scribes and Pharisees Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do you, so do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear, and they lay on them, and they lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their fingers. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries, sorry, broad and their fringes long. And they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, or for, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for you neither enter yourself nor allow those who would go into it, enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for, the tra for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, he makes him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves." Woe to you, blind guides, who say, If anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that has made the gold sacred? And you say, If anyone swears by the altar, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it, and whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it, and whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for the tithe, mint, and dill, and cumin, and have neglected, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, and mercy, and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others, you blind guides straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, then that the outside also may be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanliness. Uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are, that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah the son of Barakiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Lament over Jerusalem Verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you des desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24. 
Jesus foretells destruction of the temple. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these, do you do you see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Verse 3. Signs of the end of the age. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, he, the, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, saying, Answer them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birthing of birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And, ha and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the loves of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Verse 15, the abomination of desolation. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is in the housetop not go down to that what is in this house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for the women who are pregnant and those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such has not been seen from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand, so if they say to you, Look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Verse 29, The Coming of the Son of Man Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the heaven, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Verse 32, the lesson of the fig tree. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see all of these things, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Verse 36. No one knows that day and hour. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the com coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And then they were, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. 
But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Well, who then is the, the excuse me? Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is the servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eat and drinks with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and in an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him in with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. That is three chapters. We got chapter 25, 26, 27, and 28 that we will get recorded in for tomorrow. Um, this is actually quite astonishing because today has been... Something that came across to me earlier today that had my mind start thinking uh, on some things in regarding to the end times. And in reading what we just went and read through, it just reemphasizes the fact that I need to not look out into man's way of describing things for everything that he just said is what is to come and those are the things that we need to be staying awake for and keeping our eyes open for the world is in a horrible place right now that is absolutely clear in everywhere you look at sin is gathering in such a massive form that it is scary and it, it, it does show that times are getting darker you know, we are approaching that final hour, but as it just stated, you know, nobody knows but the Father of what time, that hour, the minute, the second that it is going to be happening. Um, so this just gives me that extra strength in knowing, you know, if you are a follower of Christ, you don't need to worry about these things, for we're going to be taken care of. We're going to be lifted in heaven, and we'll be riding with Jesus as we take on sin and the evils of this world and i honestly like i can't wait for that day i cannot wait to meet my father in heaven it is something that i i, I truly do long for but i'm in not a rush for if that could make sense to any of you um so it obviously is this day was meant for these chapters, which is just another showing sign of God's hand in giving you knowledge of these things. It was something that I was praying for, and I feel like he's giving me that answer because of being placed exactly where we're supposed to be in what we just read. Um, so thank you. Um, so with that, I will let you guys go. We'll get the rest of this figured out or read out tomorrow, and then we will continue on with the book of Mark. Um, so I love you all. I hope you have a blessed week. God bless you all and have a great night.